We start with that breaking news in San Francisco where we now know that crews have made progress on that two alarm fire. It's happening at a four story building near Clay and Lyon. Today in the base, Ginger Bonaire Saab is there at the scene. Ginger, you're getting some new updates from the captain that we spoke with earlier this morning. That's right, Chris. Captain Justin Shore of uh, San Francisco Fire just told us that the bulk of that fire, that residential building that's been on fire uh, all morning long, that is for the most part contained. The bulk of that, they are still working on hot spots in the voids of the building uh, to make sure that those don't turn into something uh, that's more of more concern. But the first calls for this fire came in before 4:30. Uh, Justin uh, Justin Shore tells us that you know crews were on scene in. Less Less than four minutes, but already they were presented with a unique set of challenges as firefighters are uh, for uh, pretty much every day that they're on work. Uh, Captain Shore is here to talk to us about uh, more of those unique challenges that had to do with the weather and the work that is actually being done on the building. Captain Shore, talk to us about that. So fire crews first arrived. They initially saw a fire on all four floors of this four story, six unit residential building. They uh, very quickly activated a second alarm, which sends twice as many firefighters to the scene. They knew they were going to have challenges, one of those being the early morning wind that we had coming over the hill. We're just south of the Presidio. Smoke was down all the way to the street level. Visibility was almost zero at some points. We also had a spitting mist, almost a rain, which makes all of our tools and equipment slippery, but our firefighters were able to quickly get to work and hold this fire to the building of origin. And we see the scaffolding that's wrapped around the building. I know you were telling me earlier that presented a, a unique challenge to getting the fire to behave the way it usually does. When the scaffolding is wrapped uh, to protect things from falling down to the ground, it also creates different wind events uh, around the fire initially. One of our other concerns is it prevents our firefighters from being able to enter uh, upper floor windows using our ladders and uh, complete a search for any occupants at the time. However, our firefighters are very well trained to adapt and we were able to apply water via our uh, ladder pipe operations and knock down the bulk of the fire very quickly. All right, and quickly, uh, Captain Shore, we just received word from the owner of the building. There were no residents. There were, uh, it, the building was vacant at the time. We have received information that the building was vacant. We also have no reports of injuries and our primary and secondary searches have shown no one in the building. Okay, all right. And uh, I know you guys are still at work. You will continue to be. Thank you for your work this morning. Uh, we'll check in in, in just a bit. Um, uh, Captain Shore also just advising people that if you are in the neighborhood, Try to avoid the neighborhood if you don't need to be in the neighborhood, I guess is what I'm trying to say, uh, because the streets around are still closed. We're just south of the Presidio in the uh, Presidio Heights neighborhood of San Francisco. So if you don't need to be here, you avoid the area, mm. the smoke. They're still trying to work on uh, clearing everything so that um, the smoke is no longer a problem. But Chris, the markets, as they were saying, that smoke was so heavy this morning that people all the way from the Tenderloin, uh, they were getting some calls from people all the way in the Tenderloin. Mm. Yeah. A lot of smoke. Yeah, and good to hear Nova what's inside that building. Yeah. Yes. Ginger, Hunter Carol Sopports, reporting live. Thank you, Ginger. Now